Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial we create a parameterized FreeCAD model of the cylinder that you see on the screen. I'm using FreeCAD 0.19.3, the current stable release that's available on FreeCAD's website. And today is the 21st of March 2022. So the cylinder, if we right click and just show a transparent view just to show some of the internal features so you can see that there's a cylinder bore that goes all the way through over here and then on the top face we've got if I can just show this view over here on the top face we've got three blind tapped holes where the drill depth is deeper than the tap depth and we also have these three drilled recess holes on the top face and then on the side face we've got um, we've got a flat uh, hole a flat bottom hole and then we have a, also a tapped hole and a drilled hole so the drill's depth is deeper again than the tapped depth. Okay, and then the other important thing about this cylinder is there are three chamfers. There's this chamfer over here that you see here, and then there are these two chamfers on the side over here that with the same size. Let's look at the top view, maybe that's better. So we've got these two chamfers over here, and then the two chamfers on the front. That are the same size okay so with that said let's start uh, let's jump in okay so what we'll do is I'll create a new empty document let me just also say in the description of this video you will find links to other videos um, I've created a video that shows the working of the oscillating model steam engine and I've also shown a video on what happens if you click on inside the sketcher on the constraints because you will notice that my mouse cursor is a big cross and that's for the purposes of this video so you're welcome to have a look at those two videos for further clarification okay so let's jump in so we'll start a new document and we'll go to the uh, spreadsheet workbench in the spreadsheet workbench you'll create on this icon create a new spreadsheet and we'll double click the spreadsheet to make it visible okay if i can just show the inputs with the sizes because we are now going to create the inputs for this um, uh, cylinder so the there are many sizes and i'll come back to this view uh, or this pdf later on in the video for now it's important to note we've got a cylinder height, we've got a cylinder length, and we've got a cylinder width. And then we also have a bore diameter, this 12, and we've got a bore, the cylinder placement, this 21 millimeters. It's placed from the from this face, 21 millimeters. So that with those, let's first let's start by entering those five parameters. So if we click on cell A1, we can type in um, height cylinder. And then we type in the next one, length cylinder. You will notice the names. You can, you can in this uh, column A, you can enter any name for the parameter you want to dimension or want to yeah you want to uh, link to your model uh, spaces are allowed but i deliberately don't type in any spaces what i do is i give the start each word i start with a capital letter and i don't put any spaces and you'll see in a minute why i do that
Okay, so with the names typed in, we can just maybe make the column a little bit wider. We can then enter the values, okay, and the height, if you remember, the height was 32, the length was 31, and the width was 20. Okay, so let's type in those values quickly. So it is 32, the length was 31. And the width was 20. Okay, so if we go back here, the bore, the bore is 12 millimeter and the placement is 21. So if we go back here, cylinder bore, we will type in 12. Cylinder placement, we'll type in 21. Okay, so what we can do now is all these, all these values we can highlight. This is optional, but it's good practice to just highlight them. Click on properties, click display unit, and they are all in millimeter. Okay, and now we want to allocate aliases. Now there are different ways of doing it. We want to allocate for each of these cells in column B, we want to allocate an alias, um, and now you'll notice why I've typed in the name of the parameter the way I did. So what I do is I double click in um, cell A1, I press Control C to copy the name, I then click cell B1, right click, properties and here is alias i click in the window and control v for paste height cylinder and i can okay that okay and i basically do the same for all the others Okay, so with that done, we can now go back to our 3D view. Uh, you will notice that the file we've created is still unnamed, so it's a good idea to save it now. So we can say save as, and then you can give it any name you like. Um, I'll just use the name I already, well, I've already created the file. Um, I give it the name cylinder, and this is just a, my... Uh, recommendation so you give the part name uh, dash and the date um, that way if you make newer versions of the same part you've got all of them alphabetically stored and you can see which are the new latest versions of a specific part okay so let's save that right and then the spreadsheet we can rename uh, and we will name we will name that cylinder inputs again without any spaces starting each word with a capital letter okay so now in the 3d view um, we go into our part design workbench we click a new part we create a sketch we do it on the xy plane we say okay and we start by creating a circle concentric with the origin okay 
we constrain the diameter of this circle and now we click on this blue fx inside the white circle we click there and we type we start by typing capital C and there you automatically see cylinder inputs appear okay dot and the one we want is cylinder bore so once again we start typing and the cylinder bore is right at the top we can click it the result is 12 and we can say okay and we can say okay okay we can zoom in a little bit um, right click just to go out of this um, mode we, we are currently in so that we can drag uh, the diameter make it a bit neater all right next we will draw a block or rectangle around this circle so let's do that and now we need to constrain our rectangle the first constraint we'll put in is this one over here create a symmetry constraint between two points with respect to a line or a third point okay and what we want to do is we want to create a symmetry constraint uh, between these two points and the x-axis okay so we click after we've clicked this button over here we click the top vertex bottom vertex and we click the line um, all right so with that done we can now start to constrain the dimensions let's use fix a length of a line or the distance between a line and a vertex okay so we click this icon uh, uh, yeah we click this icon if we do that we need to now uh, click on the vertices we want to constrain so the first let's click these two vertices we click on the blue fx in the white circle we click uh, cylinder okay and now we can't see and let's just give it a second there's cylinder inputs dot and what we want is uh, this is the width of the cylinder okay if after typing the first letter your um, parameter don't appear then just type the second letter and there you can see what cylinder is appearing we say okay 20 is fine all right so next we will we are still in this mode over here fix a length of a line or a distance uh, we can for to if we want to if we want to select the line we can do that click on fix the horizontal distance between two points we click the line click the blue fx click cylinder inputs dot and this will be length cylinder we click ok click ok now you will notice we've got we our sketch has one degree of freedom so we are still in this mode um so let's do that quickly uh let's if i right click you will notice if i i can drag my rectangle left and right i can't move it up and down so that's the degree of freedom we want to constrain so we click we now have to we now have to click on cl fix the horizontal distance between two points because if we click on fix the length of a line or the distance between a line and a vertex and we select the uh, origin and we select that point ah that works okay that works that works so yes that works but what wouldn't work what wouldn't work is if you click fix the length of a line 
and you click that vertex and this vertex now it's the uh, diagonal distance that is dimensioned and that's not what we want okay so but what does work is if you say fix the length of a line or the distance between a line and a vertex and you click the origin and you click this line that works all right so that works but what i prefer because um, I just prefer fix the horizontal distance between two points. Click this vertex, click that vertex. Now oh, that also works. Okay, click the blue FX. Click, type in your first letter, cylinder inputs, dot, cylinder placement. There we go. Click OK. Click OK. Our sketch is fully constrained. We can right click and neaten up the dimensions if you prefer. Okay, we can close our sketch. Now we go to the model tree, model view. With the sketch selected, we say pad. Okay, and now it's important to say symmetric to the plane. This is what I recommend. Okay, for the length, we click on the blue FX. We once again click cylinder inputs and we want height. Height of the cylinder. So we say okay. We click okay. And the, imp the reason why it was important to click symmetric to plane is now our. If I unhide the origin, we select the origin, press spacebar, our um, model is symmetric uh, about the XY plane, okay, which is what we want because this, this hole that we're going to drill is exactly in the middle. You can see that the height of 16 and this total height is 32. So then it will be easy to create this hole. Okay, so that's my recommendation. It's obviously not the only way. You can do it in different ways. But this is what I recommend. Okay. Right, so with that done, the next step for us, um, if we select the origin, press space bar, we just hide it quickly. Okay, so let's have a look. So our next step will be, let's create these holes in the top. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create this specific hole over here. Uh, and we're going to create two holes. What I refer to as the drill hole, which is this bottom portion. It obviously goes from the top all the way to the bottom. And then we create a tapped hole, which rep represents the threaded portion of this blind hole. Okay, so we we will create those two holes that represents this single tapped hole, and then we'll create this recess hole uh, on this side, and with those holes created, we'll just create a polar pattern, and um, to uh, to create the remaining two sets of holes. Okay, so let's quickly do that. Alright, so in FreeCAD, the first thing we want to do, let's unhide the origin. So we want to create a datum plane that's parallel to the XY plane and that's positioned on the top face. Um, so let's do that. So with the XY plane, now make sure once you've un, once you've um, made the origin visible, all the planes are selected. The complete origin is selected. Okay, so just click in the 3D view. Now everything is blue in my setup. Then click the XY plane. Now you will see the XY plane is selected. All the other things are unselected because the origin exists of an x-axis, y, z, x-y plane, 
y x z and y z plane okay so we've selected the x y plane we click create a datum plane and we are going to offset it in the z direction uh, the only thing we don't know is, is if it yes it's going to be the positive z direction okay so we click on this blue fx we click on cylinder inputs here we go we click height height cylinder divided by 2 because it's obviously only half the height and there we go ok we can click ok now let's hide the origin we select it in the model view we click spacebar with the datum plane you will notice this white tick in the blue circle with the date to remove that we just uh, selected the datum plane in the tree view and click recompute with the datum plane selected we say create a sketch okay um, now what we want to do is if I can just go back to my input file um, so the M2 holes there are three of them they are equispaced so they are angled at 120 degree intervals uh, and this portion this 16 PCD PCD stands for pitch circle diameter and that's the circle if that you will that can be created that runs through the axes of each of those tapped holes right um, and you will notice on the opposite side that this these three recess holes are on a different PCD it's on a, an 18 PCD pitch circle diameter right so let's first concentrate on the tapped holes it's M2 16 PCD so what we what we want to do now um, this icon over here toggles the toolbar between selected geometry 2 from construction mode once we click it you will notice the icons turn blue they were white if we click it again they turn back to white okay white is a geometry mode blue is um, construction mode right so we want to create a construction line that's concentric with the origin okay it will help if I click the correct button so concentric with the origin click and drag we want to constrain the diameter okay and now uh, I have not updated my um, spreadsheet yet so let's just close it for the time being and we enter a few the other parameters that we want um, to link to our 3d model okay so the first one is the and uh, what I will call the tapped hole top PCD okay right and we can enter that um, let us also do let, let us also do what I call the tap hole top Uh, okay, draw depth and okay, let me just wait for the 
text to disappear here okay so let's do this okay we're going to call it the next parameter is going to be tap the whole top tap depth okay so all right so let's um so the PCD is 16 millimeters, the draw depth is 10, and the tap depth is 5. Okay, so let's enter that. The PCD is 16, the draw depth is 10, the tap depth is 5. Okay, so for an M2 hole, you will notice that the draw depth is significantly deeper more than two times the um, nominal diameter of the screw thread okay, which is ample it's an ample provision that i've made okay so i can once again highlight those three cells right click click properties click display unit and type mm for millimeters right and then i do exactly what i did before uh double click control c ah that's not what i wanted to do okay let's just wait for the text to disappear so i double click control c click here right click properties alias control v okay and i do the same for the others so with that done we can now uh, go to our cylinder you see I've went I went out of the sketch so I can just to go back in I can double click on the sketch there we go so I can now constrain or fix the diameter okay and it's blue FX cylinder inputs Tap the whole top PCD, that's what I want. Click OK. Right, now I right click just to go out of this fixed diameter. I click and drag just to clean this up a little bit. I want to remove it because I want to now create a circle at this location over here. Right, so that circle does not have to be in construction mode, we want it in geometry geometry mode so the white icon I click on circle what I do now is I uh, I select the PCD I hover my mouse close to the PCD until the PCD circle turns yellow click and drag and now you will see that my circle is fixed to the PCD this constraint fix a point to an object is automatically was selected right what I do next is I click that constraint click the center line of my circle and click the x-axis and now you will notice if I go down here I've got two fix a point to an object constraints as part of the sketch right which is exactly what we want Right, so we can close that. Okay, uh, we can hide the datum plane with the sketch selected. We can say create a hole with the selected sketch. Okay, uh, it needs to be profiled as an isometric regular profile 
the drilled hole is created using this threaded option the size is an M2 the depth is uh, sorry let's just go back there the depth we click again on this blue FX okay and now we type in cylinder inputs again dot tapped hole tapped hole top drill depth that's the s what we want and we click ok if we scroll down you will notice that the default setting for drill point is angled which is exactly what we want ok so we can scroll up and we click ok right so what we can then do is rename our hole to tapped hole uh, okay let's just wait all right when i yeah these sss when i type my left and right arrow keys uh, for some reason it displays as an s it's actually the left and right arrow keys so tap the hole we're still busy renaming um, this hole tap the hole top okay um okay you will notice I don't put the size of the hole here because if I wanted to change the size I can also easily go back in and change the size for example to an M1.6 or whatever size I want to for later purposes so um, that's why I don't put the size of the hole in the name okay so that's tap the hole top now we want to create so what we've created now and I can actually show it if I go to body right click appearance transparency and let's look at this view you can see this is now the drill doll uh, or it represents the drill doll um, which is um, yeah which is how the manner in which this hole will be uh, produced or manufactured okay so let's just go back there we click appearance transparency and we say close okay so now we do exactly the same we follow we repeat that whole process um, to create the tap portion of the this hole so we select the datum plane uh, click sketch create a sketch okay um, we toggle to geometry mode click create a circle make sure it's concentric with the origin okay we want to constrain the diameter of that circle we've just drawn click on the blue fx click cylinder inputs click tap the whole top pcd click ok click ok ok we right click drag it out of the way toggle back to geometry create a circle zoom in a little bit bring our mouse so that the PCD circle we've just created the highlights click drag click again now the fix a point to an object constraint is is um, automatically selected okay we go back and fix a point to an object we click that icon again click the center of the circle click the X axis okay you will notice my it my sketch has one degree of freedom and the circle is actually smaller than that 
the previous circle we've created that doesn't matter we close the sketch okay with the sketch selected we click create a hole with the sketch we once again go to regular profile now we don't select the threaded option we go to m2 which is the way the manner we did the hole previously we click on the blue fx we click cylinder or capital c we're looking for cylinder inputs and we click capital t uh, let's just see tapped hole top tap depth that's the one we want five millimeters okay um, and if we scroll down we are still fine with this angled um, option the default option that's fine so we say okay and there you go so if we okay sorry we just need to rename this so we call it tapped hole tapped hole uh, top okay Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Tap the whole top tap is what we should call that. Uh, this name doesn't make sense, so we just right click that again, rename that, and we say tap the whole top draw. Uh, that's not exactly what I wanted. Okay, all that I wanted to add is the word draw, tap the whole top draw. Okay, so there we go. So we have the draw toll and we've got the tap toll. So if we look at the transparent view of the model, that what it looks like so far, you can clearly see that um, the draw and yeah, the drilled hole and the tapped hole are exactly as what as we expected it would be. They would be right. So um, let us close this quickly. And if we uh, go to appearance again, uh, we can make it solid. Right. So next, what we will do is um, we will create this recessed hole it's also a ma manufactured with a normal drill bit and we know that by looking at um, the end or the tip of the drill is angled all right so uh, the way we'll do that is we will um, on the we don't need to draw or create another datum plane uh, we can use the existing datum plane or the one that we've already created. We, are, we um, select the datum plane, click create a sketch, um, and then uh, before we do that, sorry, before we do that, I just realized that uh, I haven't entered the values in the spreadsheet already, or I haven't done that yet. So, um, let's do that quickly so we'll call this hole um, just normal hole hole top pcd okay and hole top diameter diameter and then how top depth right so now 
looking at the inputs so the PCD is 18 the diameter is 2.5 and the depth is 1 millimeter so if we go to FreeCAD so the PCD is 18 the diameter is 2.5 and the depth is one millimeter okay so we can highlight these three cells right click properties display unit they are all in millimeter okay and then uh, we simply allocate aliases to each of these cells same as we've done before so we double click copy click on the cell, right click, properties, alias, and paste. And we do the same for all the others. Control C, click on the cell, properties, alias, Control V. Double click, Control C, click, right click, properties alias control V there we go right so with that done now we can go back to our 3d view and we can say let's save okay uh, <coughs> we've went out of the sketch so we go back into the sketch and um, okay we toggle to construction mode create a circle, it concentric with the origin um, we constrain the diameter of the circle we click on the blue FX cylinder inputs what we are looking for is whole top ok, let's just do that, whole top PCD is what we want, ok ok uh, we right click just to drag that out of the way then we zoom in we toggle to geometry create a circle away from the well we, let's try it the other way around now let's make it uh, fixed to the x axis we drag it so there you can see the constraint fixed point to an object is uh, already or by default because we created it with the x-axis highlighted okay now we want to we want to create um, another fix a point to an object constraint so we click on the icon we click on the center line we click on the PCD and there you go there you can see both are there as we expected so we can close it it's got one degree of freedom which is ok with the sketch selected we go to create a hole with a selected sketch in this case we won't uh, select a profile for this hole it, it obviously will not be drilled or threaded rather sorry uh, the diameter we click on the blue FX we then say cylinder cylinder inputs and what we want is whole top try that whole top diameter ok and the depth is going to be once again cylinder inputs there it, it appears and what we want is whole top depth there it is ok one millimeter ok if we scroll down the angled draw point type is perfect it's exactly what we want that's the default option so we can ok that and we can say let's rename this hole so it's hole top whole top I think that suffice that description you can name it anything you like right so 
uh, we can just for um, completeness sake have a look again at the transparent view of our model look at this view over here and here we go so if we compare that with this it is um, exactly what we want so uh, we can scroll down close that just click that again appearance transparency make it solid okay so what we can do now is we can um, uh, okay we are now going to create a polar pattern all right so there's more than one way of doing it so what I suggest you do is um, select the features that you want to create the polar pattern for so it's obviously the tap the whole top drill press and hold control and select the other features as well okay so those three features is what we want to create a polar pattern with we then click on this icon over here you can see that the three features we want to create a polar pattern for is already here it's already selected um, we can scroll down okay and as you can see here um, it defaults to the normal sketch axis uh, which in this case is actually correct it can it is correct but for we c you can also see what appears on the screen is the uh, the three axes appear on the screen and the one that we want is the z axis over here so we can go and say ba base z axis uh, the angle is 360 we want the full revolution and the occurrences we want three occurrences and there you can see the 3d view already updated and that's exactly what we want okay so we can okay that that works okay so next we do we want to create we want to create these three holes okay and as i said before this is a flat bottom recess and then there's a drill and tap hole from the bottom of the flat bottom recess all right so let's quickly do that before we jump in let's just look at the sizes so uh, we we won't have to worry about the 16 millimeters because our uh, padded pad was symmetric about the um, XY plane so uh, we don't need to worry about the 16 if we make it concentric with the origin it will be perfectly located okay so there's a diameter 5 there's a depth 2,8 um, and then this is an M3 hole the tap depth is 5 the drill depth is 8.5 right so let's enter those parameters in our spreadsheet okay if we go here we can save also we can all right so let's do that quickly
Okay, so with those four parameters named, we can enter the values. So let's just quickly go back. The diameter is 5, the depth is 2,8. So let's enter that. So the diameter is 5, and the depth is 2,8. Okay, and uh, the draw depth is 8,5 and the tap depth is 5. So let's quickly add that. The draw depth 8.5 and the tap depth is 5. Alright, we can highlight those cells, right click properties. Go to display unit and type mm for millimeter. Okay, and then as before, I'm going to copy each of these names and allocate that to the alias of each of these cells. Right, and now we're ready to create the, the holes in the 3D view. We can just save our model. Okay, so first of all, we want to create a datum plane on this face over here. Just to make sure we start with the correct origin plane. This is the YZ plane, so if I select that. I click this icon, create a new datum plane, and we want to offset it in the Z direction. Okay, so we click on the blue FX, we click cylinder inputs, and what we want is cylinder placement. Here it is at the bottom. Okay, that's what we want. We can okay that. We can hide the origin. And go down the datum plane, this white tick in the blue circle. We can just recompute. With the datum plane selected, we say create a sketch. Okay, and what we want to do now is create a circle in the sketcher. Make sure it's concentric with the origin. And we do that by bringing our mouse until the red dot turns yellow. Click, drag, click. One degree of freedom. We close the sketch. Uh, we can hide the datum plane. With the sketch selected, we say cre create a hole with the sketch. Okay, there's no profile. Um, the diameter, click on the blue FX. We click on cylinder inputs. We click on O, H, capital H, O. Alright, let's just see what appears here. Whole side. Okay, we'll have to type in a bit more. Here we go. Whole side diameter. Here we go. Okay. Uh, the depth, we click on the blue FX. Once again, type cylinder inputs. And what we want is whole side depth. Okay. 
Now what's now very important that hole has a flat bottom so make sure you select flat and then we are ready we can say okay okay and what we can just do is rename this to whole site okay right now in order for us to we can save that quickly so in order for us to now create this tap toe we will create a datum plane on this face and uh, same as what we've done for the top tap holes we'll just create two holes on top of each other one for the drilled representation drilled hole rep representation and one for the tapped hole representation right so let's quickly do that so uh, let's uh, okay unhide the origin we select the yz plane we say create a datum plane we offset it in the z direction uh, and we say cylinder inputs dot uh, cylinder placement there it is at the bottom minus Okay, let me do that. Minus uh, cylinder inputs. Cylinder inputs dot, um, and this was whole side depth. Okay, which is exactly what we want. Okay, as you can see, it's now coincident with that bottom face of the recess hole okay so we can okay that uh, we can select and hide the origin um, and then let's just recompute the datum plane with the datum plane selected we click on create a new sketch and we can click this icon just to make sure we see only the 3d geometry that's behind the sketch plane okay so we will create a circle it must be concentric with the origin click drag click one degree of freedom close it okay we can hide the datum plane with the sketch selected we click on create a hole with the selected sketch and in this case it will be a regular profile the drilled hole representation is created using a threaded option okay and this is a if i can just go back it's an m3 tapped hole so if we go here we say we select m3 okay and the depth is going to be blue fx we looking for cylinder inputs and we want tapped hole side drill depth that's the one we want 8.5 okay uh, the default selection of an angle drill point is correct uh, so we can okay that okay um, this we can rename so we will call it uh, tapped hole side draw Draw. Okay, tap the side draw. That's what we'll call it. 
Okay, um, we can do exactly the same with the datum plane selected. Uh, we click create a sketch. We click on this icon here. Just to see only the geometry behind the sketch plane. We say create a circle. We make sure it's concentric with the origin. Click, drag, click. Close it with the sketch selected. We say uh, create a hole with the selected sketch. It's isometric regular profile. Now we won't for the tap hole for the tap portion representation. We don't select thread it. Okay, this was M3. The depth is. Cylinder inputs. Um, tap the whole side. Tap depth 5, which is correct. Okay, and if we scroll down, the angled draw point type is the default is fine. So we can say okay to that. And um, we can go up and right click on the body, appearance, let's just see if we go to this view over here, that looks 100%, if we compare it to what we um, wanted to achieve, this is exactly the same. Okay, so we're happy with that, we can close that. Let's just make it solid again. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can leave it at transparent. That's fine. Okay, so the last thing that we want to do, there are two more things we want to do. The first is we want to create or just change the color. And that we can also do by clicking the body, right clicking, appearance, and uh, I think we selected brass. Yes, I think that's correct. Um, it doesn't want to change the transparency. We have to go back out and back in again. Appearance, transparency. Here we go. Okay. Now, the last thing we need, want to do is to add the chamfer. Okay, so that's quite easy. Um, as I've said in the beginning of this video, there are three, well, two sets of chamfers and one single chamfer. This is the single chamfer over here. And then we've got a set of two chamfers on, the, on this end, on the right-hand side, and a set of two chamfers on the left-hand side. Okay, so let's quickly add that. Uh, yes, before we jump in, let's just look at the sizes. So, the, the chamfers on the right hand side is 2 millimeters by 45 degrees. The chamfer on the left hand side is 4 millimeters by 45 degrees. And the top chamfer is 0 0.5 by 45. Okay, so let's name them. In our spreadsheet, we can close that. Let us save this quickly. Go to cylinder inputs and we say uh, chamfer top. Chamfer left and chamfer right. Okay, and 
So the top is 0, 0,5, chamfer left is 4, and chamfer right is 2. Okay, so we can add those values. 0 0.5 chamfer left is 4 and chamfer right is 2 ok so we can select those cells right click properties display unit and we type mm for millimeter okay and then as before i'm going to select each of these names and allocate them to the alias of these cells so i'll quickly do that So with that done, we can then just simply update our 3D model. Okay, so the, the way we do that is um, you select the edge you want to chamfer. Click on this icon over here. Um, and the size, click on the blue FX, type in... cylinder inputs is what we want and we want chamfer chamfer top okay it's equal distance so that's exactly what we want okay and we do the same we can rename that if you like. Chamfer top if you like. Okay, and then we select, press and hold control, select the other edge. We say create the chamfer. Um, click the blue FX. Type in cylinder inputs, and what we want is chamfer right. Uh, we can say okay, okay, and then we just rotate our model. Click, press and hold control, click that edge over there, click create a chamfer, click on the blue FX, click cylinder, cylinder inputs appear and we want chamfer left. That's correct. Okay. Can okay that. And there we go. And as you can see, it's exactly the same as what we intended to it to be. We can save that. And now the great thing about having let's just close this for the time being. We don't want to save that. What I want to show you is uh, we've got the 3D model and we've got the spreadsheet. We can sh actually show both windows if we tile them. And we can now 
change any of these parameters and uh, maybe uh, let me just do that again control z There we go, 32. Okay, we can change the length. Uh, what I'm not sure. I think I did not. Oh, I know what happened. I control Z. I undid the chamfer actually that I've created. So let's just. That was the chamfer right. So let's rename that quickly. Chamfer right, and then we just select this again. Personal control, and we say chamfer, and we say click on the blue FX cylinder. under inputs and we say chamfer left yes okay okay and we can say file save right so if we change the cylinder we must just make sure which one is highlighted Okay, so if we change the cylinder length to something like 50 millimeters, so you can see it updated. We can undo that. Uh, the cylinder width we can also change to something like 40. We can undo that. And the same for the for the bore. Let's change that quickly. Now you will see it does not update because if we update that, if we wanted to update that, um, there are things in the model tree that will break. The chamfer right will actually break. So let's undo that quickly. Control Z. Okay, so the 12 is fine. I just want to do is just rename this quickly. Chamfer left. Okay. Uh, before, if we wanted to increase the bore diameter, what we would have had to do is let's first make the width something like 30. Okay. And the length we make something like and what we now do is let's change the PCD of these holes to let's say 25 and 20 and now we will be able to change the cylinder of the bore to 16 no problem okay so um, using the spreadsheet is a very powerful way of uh, controlling your 3D model afterwards if you want to make changes. All right. So, yeah, with that said, thank you very much for watching.